Hey guys, what's up? I want to talk to you today about when your GFCI receptacle is tripped or is not working because there's only a few things that it can really be. Let's go ahead and talk about it now. Before we get started, remember never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. All right, so let's talk about when your GFCI receptacle is tripped or it's not working. There's really only three things that it can be. Either it doesn't have power, either it's a bad device, or it's sensing that there's a ground fault somewhere in the circuit. Now I have tons of videos on this channel that teach you all about GFCI technology, but what it is is it's that little receptacle that's in your bathroom or kitchen, right? With the buttons on it, or sometimes it may be a breaker in your panel and it's a GFCI breaker. Let's talk about the first one here. You don't have power at all. Sometimes you walk up to a GFCI and there's you know, no power, nothing, the reset button work, nothing works. So some of the things that you can do is you can go back to your electrical panel and find out if there is a breaker tripped. Sometimes there's a breaker tripped back at the panel. I'll give you another pro tip really quick. Sometimes when a breaker's tripped, it still looks like it's on, but you can actually go through your breakers and kind of go like this on the breaker and sometimes you'll find one that's loose and that means that that breaker's tripped. Sometimes you can reset that trip breaker, go back to the GFCI, maybe have to hit the reset button and all things are well. Sometimes the GFCI doesn't have power because the receptacle or outlet that was feeding it downstream is no longer working or functioning. And then you're gonna have to go farther into troubleshooting. So I don't have power there. Uh, I have power at the breaker. I feel confident about that. Nothing's tripped, nothing's off. I have to find the power breakdown in between that location and the GFCI. Another thing that it can be, and this is where you gotta be really careful, so uh, pay close attention to this. So just because there is no light on your GFCI and it won't reset does not mean that there's not power inside that box. When a GFCI device fails, oftentimes it will just no longer function, but it's still hot to the screws back there, isn't it? So it's still hot to the screws, so you have to be super careful because you think it's dead, you think it doesn't have power, you go to pull that thing out and it can bite you real quick. So one thing to do is, you know, you get your, you know, I always check with two or more, you know, forms of checking. And I, I really want to tell you this, that one thing you have to know about GFCI receptacles is that if it is dead and it's no longer working, that a multimeter will not work. And if you take your non-contact voltage checker and stick it in the holes, it will not read because it's not reading through the device because the device is no longer functioning. But it still can be hot and it'll actually be hot to the screws back there. So any checking that you do, you have to check behind the device to see if there's power. So let's say you get it in, you get it out safely, you check there is no power, then you need to find out where the breakdown happened in between the panel and in between the receptacle. So another thing that you may walk up and, and you may walk up and find out that it's just tripped. Sometimes you can hit the reset button on a GFCI that corrects the problem. No worries. You can go on about your business, but other times you hit the reset button on a GFCI and it trips again. And you're like, oh my goodness, you hit the reset button and it trips again. Well, what do you do in that case? Well, let's talk a little bit about that now. What you can do is the first thing I always do if I were to walk up and be troubleshooting a GFCI is I'm going to unplug everything in the vicinity. See, because what a ground fault circuit interrupter does, as you've learned in the past on this channel, is that it's, it's counting current. It's got one amp going in, one amp going out. And if there's any discrepancy in that count, it's going to shut off. Uh, you know, it's, it's very low count too, like six milliamps. If there's a six milliamp difference, it's going to shut that circuit off. So it can mean that current is leaking somewhere in that circuit. So it could be from something that you've got plugged in, whether you've got a fan plugged in or a piece of equipment plugged in that's shorting or the cords going bad. So I would unplug everything in the vicinity, then try to hit the reset button. And if it goes away, then you know it was one of those components and you could technically plug it in one at a time until you find out which one tripped it. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only. So if I had unplugged everything in the vicinity and, you know, uh, sometimes if you're on an outer wall of a house, you even go outside because sometimes GFCI receptacles, whether they should be or not, are running from the bathroom to outside. That was really popular in the 70s, 80s. A lot of times, you know, people will illegally pop off the kitchen receptacles and go outside. So even go outside and unplug everything, you know, just on that adjacent wall. So you get everything unplugged. If you hit that reset button and it resets, then you know it was something. If you hit the reset button and it trips again, then you've got more problems. And what it could, what it's saying is, is that somewhere downstream from that GFCI, that there is 
um, going, there's a ground fault somewhere, either currents leaking or it's, you know, faulting out. It also could mean that inside that electrical box that it is doing it as well. So you may find out once you get the circuit off, you pull it out, you may find out there was a little nick in one of the wires or one of the copper uh, wires was bending up and touching one of the hot. So there's many different scenarios of what the problem could be. So the quick takeaways from today, if you don't have power, check your uh, breaker panel and see if one of the breakers are tripped. If you still don't have power, then you likely have a bad device or you have a power breakdown in between the breaker and the GFCI. If there's no power at all, then you have a breakdown in power. If there is power right there on site, then you have a bad GFCI. The other way to check is if your uh, GFCI is tripped, then what you will do is, is you'll unplug everything in the vicinity. If it keeps tripping, then you may have a problem at another receptacle nearby, or you may have a problem inside of that receptacle box. So just some kind of general overview, right, is GFCI protection from 30,000 feet, right? And I just want to talk to you guys about these things so we can get together in the morning. You guys can learn a little bit. Let's get to it. <laughs>